What is up, guys? Little Dog Doug here. Today, I'm bringing you a mini game guide for the mini game Temple Trekking. This is a great mini game if you're an Iron Man or if you're looking to get some easy uh, sharks or silver bars or iron and coal. Um, so let's just get right into it. Now, there actually are quest requirements for this uh, mini game. You won't be able to do this mini game until you've completed an eight of the Meyer queue. Um, this will allow you to do the original Temple Trekking mini game. However, I'm also going to highly recommend that you complete the Darkness of Hollow Vale. This is going to allow you to get a better silver weapon for use in the minigame itself, as well as allowing you to do the minigame on the way back to Bergdorot um, in what is called Bergdorot Ramble. Uh, and that's going to double your uh, rates, and that's the rates I'm going to be showing you um, during this guide. Uh, if you don't do the Darkness of Hollow Vale, you can expect to get about a third to up to a half of the token rates I was getting an hour. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to highly recommend the Darkness of Hollow Vale. It allows you to effectively play the minigame um, nonstop rather than all the walking distance back to Berg de Rot. Now, there is no official skill requirement to start this minigame other than the skills required for the quests. However, um, you should have 40 plus melee combat stats as well as 40 defense just so you have good enough um, weapons and armor to be able to defeat all the monsters that you're going to encounter during the minigame and not have to die as well as um, 43 prayer. Um, so you have protection prayers while you're in there. These skills are the bare minimum for the easy um, paths in the minigame. Uh, you'll be able to do the easy pass with these skills, but I would not recommend doing the medium or hard pass because if you encounter any sort of combat uh, on those pass, you're going to have a hard time getting through that and it's going to take your token in our count down quite a bit because you'll be fighting for a long time. So with those being the minimum requirements for the easy path, um, I'm going to give you these skill recommendations before you even try. Um, for the medium path, I'm going to recommend you have at least 50 plus melee combat stats as well as 50 defense. This is for that rune armor. Obviously, with just the combat stats alone, it's going to be harder. I'm recommending these stats um, so that you can have that best uh, tier armor equipped. And then for the hard path, I'm going to recommend you have 60 plus melee combat stats and 60 plus defense. Because the monsters on the hard path can get up to level 114. Um, and it can be pretty tough to deal with all those monsters attacking you at once. Um, so even 60 on the hard path is a little low. Um, that's definitely with food in your inventory and um, eating uh, on the hard path with those uh, skill recommendations. So um, these are just the minimum recommendations. It will definitely be possible, but you still won't be able to get the best token rates per hour with these skills this is just what you can do so if you just have the minimum stats for each path then you're probably going to want to stick to the path below as you'll be able to get more resources out of it anyways now there's only one item you're going to need specifically and that is a silver or blister wood weapon um, the silver weapon and blister or blister wood weapon are needed to defeat the vampire juvenates and fire watches you may or may not encounter in the temple trekking minigame uh, they don't take damage from other sources and you will have to beat them to pass their event um, other than evading it and just losing part of your reward there are quite a few items i'm going to recommend uh, first off being a set of melee equipment that is an armor and an extra weapon other than your blister wood or silver weapon uh, and it doesn't have to be melee i'm just recommending melee um, because that silver or blister wood weapon is going to be melee and you'll get your best bonuses by also using melee armor with that. So you might as well bring another melee weapon to save some inventory space. I'm also going to recommend about 50 druid pouches. You don't need that many. That's if you want to do runs um, up to an hour long like I do. For all the gas you're going to encounter um, during this, it's going to save you a lot of food. And especially on that next recommended item, the five sacks of potatoes or cabbages. There's a puzzle you encounter um, within the Temple Trekking minigame where you have to give some sickly people out in the swamp some food to heal them. And this is just the easiest way to save inventory space uh, and just give them a minimum amount of food that they need to, for you to complete the puzzle. Um, you're going to want about 20 of your best food to give to your uh, 
partner who you're taking with you through the swamp. And then uh, prayer portion potions if you're going to be using prayers. Uh, I found that I didn't really use prayers because um, I guess I didn't really need it. I am a rather high level though at the recording of this. I'm uh, level 112 I believe. And for this minigame, that's a high level as the highest you're going to encounter is around 114, and I can take those on pretty easy. Just to give you a quick overlook of what my inventory and equipment looks like, I just have my best set of melee armor on, uh, as well as jewelry. I have my regular uh, two-handed weapon that I would use with my melee set, and then I have my silver weapon, which is a rod of Ivendis. Um, there are tiers of silver weapons you can use if you've completed an aid of the Meyer Q, which you have. Uh, the best... Uh, weapon you'll be able to get is uh, the Rod of Ivandis. You can look up how to make this on the wiki. Um, it's just a mithril bar, bar a silver bar, uh, sapphire, uh, enchanting that uh, with a tier 1 enchant, and then blessing it in the river under Pater Damas. I have my druid's polishers. I have more than 50 just because I was doing this for a very long time. I have those five sacks of potatoes, and then I have food in my inventory. Um, just in case. Uh, half of that food will go to your partner or more if you uh, want or less. It's up to you. But you don't need to keep all that in your inventory as you can give some of that to your partner. So you will have more inventory spaces to loot items during the minigame. This minigame starts in Berg Durat. If this is your first time doing this minigame, you're going to have to walk there until you get 100 uh, points in the game. You won't be able to... Um, Get there quickly other than walking through the Mortmire Swamp or taking the uh, boat to Morton from behind the bar in Canifis. So the fastest way is going to be walking there or taking the boat. So to start the minigame, you're going to want to right click and read the notice board. I'll explain more of this interface in just a second, but to start you're going to want to click confirm on the easy character who's in the top left. It should be Dean Valino. Right click on him and select trade. And they're going to give him however many food you want to give him. Up to 28, he has a, as big an inventory as you. I can't give him any food at the time I was recording this because his inventory is actually full of food. Um, but you can give him as many food as you want if this is your first time playing the minigame. So this is the interface that just popped up when you click the notice board. In the top left corner, there's going to be a post. This will be the easy character. He'll be able to fight the best with you. On the right side, you're going to have the medium character who will still be able to fight but won't be as good a fighter as the easy character and then you have the hard character who really won't do anything to assist you with fighting and you'll really just be escorting them through the swamp. Once you decide what NPC you're going to take you're going to be presented with this interface. Um, on the right it shows you what level they are, uh, what unlocks they've had um, from leveling and whether or you want to confirm them so that you can trade them or quick start and then it'll take you right into the game itself. Now. Once you get going and select quick start or talk to your NPC after you've confirmed them, um, you're going to be taken into this instance here. This is the beginning of the temple trick where you choose your easy, medium, or hard path. Now you only have one instance for each path. On the west side you have the easy path and on the north side the medium path. On the east side you have the hard path. Now you can right click on any path to ch quickly choose it or you can click on it to continue. And you can choose the first chat option saying, yes, I want to go down this path um, with your NPC. Um, the second chat option is going to, uh, you'll ask if the NPC can see what's down it. And every now and again, the NPC will give you a kind of idea as to what puzzle you're going to have to face. And the third chat option says, no, I don't want to go down this. So those are really your options. Um, each time you click on one, it's only for one puzzle and then you're brought back to this room until you continue the trek and you get to Pater Damas. Now as for those events and puzzles I was talking about, um, there are three types. There's puzzles, combat, and friendlies. These events are um, the only types you're going to encounter during uh, your trek. The puzzles require you to solve some sort of problem before you can progress. The combat events uh, require you to defeat all the enemies before you can progress and the friendlies provide you with a buff to assist with your progression through the trek. Um, we're going to start with the puzzles. If you don't want to see um, all the events, you can just skip to the end as I've really covered most of the information and I'll get to the rewards later. Now one of the first and one of the most annoying puzzles I'm going to tell you about. Luckily it's rare to encounter is the bog. Um, similar to uh, the underground pass puzzle, you have to continually walk over this until you find the correct footing. 
in the correct way across. So uh, if you found the wrong way, you'll get a pop-up in your dialog or in your uh, chat box telling you the ground seems stable, but you fall through. And as you can see, um, I'm just trying to find my way across here. There is no efficient way to do it, um, sadly. You just have to try and make your way across to the other side. Luckily, um, you can click on the mini-map um, across the other side and your character will get as far as he can over. But it is quite annoying having to watch your character fall into the bog every time. It does make it all that much more satisfying though when you finally do find the right path. As you can see, um, on this next try, I finally find the right path and I'm just clicking away with excitement. Once you're finally across, you just continue your trek on the path. Now this is the bridge puzzle you're going to spawn in and you're going to see there's a broken bridge. You have the options of chopping down three of these trees or fighting the undead lumberjacks that spawn. These undead lumberjacks do drop parts of the lumberjack set, so that may be beneficial um, to you if you want to get that. But you can pick up the planks that they drop, chop down the trees, or a combination of both, and then fix the broken bridge to cross it. You have to have three of these items in total. That can be a mixed match of any three. Um, and just continue to click on the bridge until you place the third one, and then you can continue your trek along the path. Now the lasso puzzle is quite easy. You're going to have a swamp tree here. You just have to trim it three times and then click the short vines in your inventory to tie them together. And then the tree hanging over the river, you just click on it to lasso and then click on the rope that is under it. Another puzzle you're going to encounter is the nature spirit. Just jump the bridge and then right click the nature spirit and select water power. Once your character turns blue, all you have to do is click douse flames on the strange reeds. They're going to appear all the way around his grotto here. There's no way to stop them. Just continue to click. Once you've clicked them all, jump back over the bridge. And then on the northwest side, you can continue your trek. And the final puzzle you'll encounter is the one where you have to feed all these sick people. So empty one of your potato sacks and use the potatoes on each of the sick people. Um, depending on what path you're on, easy through uh, hard will determine the number of people you have to feed. Hard, you'll have to feed five. Easy path, you'll have to feed three. And then once you've fed them all, you can refill your potato sack and continue your trek to the north. Now for the first of the combat ones, you'll have the ghasts. Depending on which path you took, Easy, medium, or hard will determine the number of ghasts that you have to face here, and also their level. You do not need the druid pouch to fight them, as the NPC does have a druid pouch to make them uh, combatable. However, you will lose some food during the process if you don't have your own, because the druid pouch will stop them from hitting you um, without being able to be hit. Next we have the giant snails. These are going to be the highest level monsters you encounter. Um, depending on which path you encounter them on, once again, and that will also affect the number of them that you face, but they're pretty easy, all you have to do is fight them, um, use AoE abilities if you can, and then continue your trek to the east. For the Juvenites, make sure you're using your silver weapon, um, once again, depending on the path, will affect however many number of enemies you face, as well as their level, keep that in mind from here on out. Um, your silver weapon has to be used against the Vampire Juvenites and the Vire Watches, if you can get them, it depends on what quests you've completed, but all you have to do is kill him, and then you can continue your trek. Now, only on the hard path will you encounter this fight. This is a sort of boss fight. There will be four tentacles and a head you have to defeat. And then click on the boat to continue your trek. Once you defeat a tentacle, they will all become weaker until you're down to defeating the head. Just defeat the tentacles first, and it will get significantly easier. and then continue your trek by clicking on the boat. Now, this is a second group of juvenites you're gonna have to fight. It's just in a different setting. It's all the same. Just make sure you have your silver weapon equipped. And then um, on the north, there is a gate that you have to click through and open um, to get through to the next trek. Another group of monsters you're gonna have to fight that's rather cut and dry are the nail beasts. Um, these drop items used for summoning, so they can be kind of valuable drops, um, but that's up to you if you want to keep them and leave them in your inventory. Once you're done, go through the north to continue your trek. Now this uh, encounter is a little different. 
Um, what you're going to want to do is go around to the north and uh, attack the shadows or shades attacking the doors. Depending on what path you took will determine the level and type of uh, shade you're going to have to fight. Um, just make sure you attack the ones attacking the doors first as they will turn the people in the buildings into more shades for you to defeat. And then go to the north to continue your trek. Another combat encounter that is a little different than the rest is this graveyard with all the skeletons. You have a couple options here. You can gather them all up and AoE them down. They will aggro on you no matter what your level is. Or you can gather them all up and bring them into the center and then leech the tomb if you're a lower level. This will be easier for you as it one-shots all of them that are around on the hill here. You won't be able to get them all in one go, but it takes quite a few down. And then you can just uh, fight the rest and take them down pretty easy. And then on the northeast side, outside of the uh, graveyard is the trek continue now i left this one for last because it is also a little different um the swamp snakes are going to attack you with magic from a distance and instead of uh disappearing when they're dead and leaving a drop you have the option to skin them this can be kind of confusing i just wanted to make sure you knew um that it is skinning them and they won't disappear and the snake hide they drop is kind of valuable so you might want to do that if you want the inventory space and then finally the friendly encounters you speak to Abador crank he uh, gives you a buff to your health and your defense and that's it once you've continued your trek all the way through you're going to be dumped off at the pater domus temple outside the gates in canifis um, and you're going to be standing next to another notice board so if you have completed the darkness of hollow vale you'll be placed here with the notice board you're going to want to click to read the notice board, and you'll have three more people to choose from, all who will be back at level zero. If you haven't completed the Darkness of Hollow Vale, you'll have to go back through the gate and walk back to Berg Durat. However, if you haven't completed it, like I said, you'll have the notice board, and you can use this to get all the way back to Berg Durat to just go back, and you'll get another reward token. Now, as for the token rates I received while doing this minigame, um, they're different for almost every uh, follower and path I took. So for the easy follower on the easy path, I was able to get the most tokens an hour, obviously. However, they were the lowest tier tokens, so you won't get the best rewards from that. Um, for the medium path, I got around 30 tokens an hour, this being the blue and yellow tokens, depending on what puzzles and fights you encountered during the path. Um, and then for the hard path, I uh, got about 28 tokens an hour of yellow and red variety. I also got a blue one, but uh, it was because I just had um, one puzzle and I was through all the way. Keep in mind, if you have not done the Darkness of Hollow Vale, you will be getting about half of these rates because you'll have to walk all the way back um, to Berg Durat um, from Pater Damas rather than being able to start over right again and do the minigame back to Berg Durat. Until you've gotten 500 points from the game, in which you can use a games necklace to teleport back to Berg Durat to restart the game. However, I, it's way faster to just do the Darkness of Hollow Vale. You're going to need to do the quest at some point anyway, so you might as well do it. For the medium follower on the easy path, I managed to get 32 tokens an hour. These were also blue. Um, you're going to get blue tokens from the easy path no matter what. Yellow um, can happen, but it's very rare. You'd have to get all fights. Um, for the medium path with the medium follower, I managed to get blue, yellow, and red tokens, depending on the fights and puzzles I encountered. Uh, and I've got around 28 tokens an hour doing this. For the hard path, I got around 24 tokens an hour with the medium follower. And these were yellow and red tokens, just like both other hard paths. But you'll get, like I said, it it's really up to RNG on what path you get um, through the um, swamp. And then for the hard follower on the easy path, I got around 32 tokens an hour um, with all blue tokens. Um, it doesn't matter if the follower, what or what difficulty the follower is, it matters what puzzles and fights you encounter during, and how you performed in them, and how much damage your follower took. For the medium path, I got around 24 tokens an hour with the hard follower, blue and yellow, and for the hard path, I got around 24 tokens an hour, yellow and red. Now you'll see in just a second that just because I got less tokens does not mean I got worse rewards. As for the higher tier tokens, you get higher tier rewards or more of a certain item with that token. But even with that, a lot is left to be desired with RNG with this game because I did happen to get the most sharks, which is the reward I chose from the 40 token uh, easy path than I did with the 28 tokens an hour hard path with the easy follower. 
with your NPCs leveled up all the way, as mine weren't during the record of this video, I can see it being easily possible to get up to 50 tokens an hour doing this minigame, which is a lot of sharks, a lot of silver bars, and a lot of other materials that you might want, especially if you're an Iron Man. So, once you get a token from your follower at the end of a trek, you can click on that anywhere to redeem your rewards. Now, um, you have reward options um, from Pure Essence to XP is available. You cannot choose which, uh, which XP you get. It's randomly assigned. Um, but as you can see, the blue tokens um, don't award uh, as much as the raw sharks, is, which is the example I used, as the yellow tokens would or even as the red tokens would but they have a chance to award more um, at their max than even the red tokens would. Um, but the red tokens have way more of a chance to award more than the blue tokens or the yellow tokens would, so it's really up to you and how you think your RNG is. As I've been saying, there are points also that can give rewards. This is at the notice board. Um, you just have to click the second tab which says rewards, and there are rewards for 100 points through 594 points. These points are the combined total levels of all your NPC followers. Now at 100 points, you unlock a shortcut from the gate to the Mortmire Swamp all the way to the Nature Spirits Grotto. This speeds up the Bergdorot runs a lot if you haven't done in Darkness of Hollowvale. But once again, I really recommend you do that. It's going to speed this up a lot. Even with that, you'll only get half the amount of tokens an hour as you would if you had done both. Um, at 200, 300, and 400, you're going to get construction pieces, which are just for extra XP while you're doing construction. At 500, you're going to get the ability to teleport to Berg to Rot with a games necklace. And then at 594, you're going to unlock the ability to summon a familiar with 87 summoning. Um, that is just a ghast. Now, just to prove my point, this is just me showing you um, that shortcut from the gate to the Nature Spirits Grotto. Um, and how slow it still is to get back to Berg to Rot um, because you have to run through this whole little wormy maze here to get back It just it, it's not it's faster than running through the swamp and you can serve more stuff of By avoiding the gas completely, but it's still much slower That's gonna be it for this video guys if this helped you at all uh, or anything, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, comment if you got any questions, suggestions, tips, or anything, and if you're bored, check out some of my other stuff. I do all sorts of guides. Just click on one and tell me if you liked it. Thanks.